If the wall is breached, Helm's Deep will fall. Even if it is breached, it would take a number beyond reckoning. Thousands. Tens of thousands. But, my lord, there is no such force. A new power is rising. Its victory is at hand. Stellaris The Machine Age, the next DLC is coming very, very soon in actually just five days time as of the recording of this video. It's coming on Tuesday the 7th. We are now going to look through the patch notes for this new release, which mainly includes the 3.12 Andromeda free patch. We're getting a lot of changes coming in with this free patch affecting systems outside of just those touched by the machine age. Of course, I'm going to put everything into chapters. You'll probably want to go and have a look at the balance changes coming in. A host of civics are being messed around with just a little bit. Without any further ado, let's just dive straight in. The first part of these new patch notes is a complete feature list for the Machine Age expansion coming on the 7th of May. I'm not going to read through that full feature list. It's on your screen now if you want to have a quick look. We've gone through this feature list a couple of times already, so I'm going to swiftly move on and take a look at the 3.12 Andromeda features. That is the free stuff we are getting part of the 3.12 free patch. So what are these features? Well, first off here, if you're a fan of multiplayer, they're adding a button to resync slash wait for a resync to the multiplayer out of sync dialogue meaning finally we can resync our game without needing to leave and hot join again or entirely rehost. This is hopefully a blessing. We will have to see how good it is though. They've added the ability to select to continue playing as another empire after the game is over. So even if you're not completing the game by Cosmogenesis, if you lose, you will immediately be able to play as another empire straight away. I think that might be a feature that's been in already, but I'm not sure. Machines now use modified habitability and lifespan rules rather than largely ignoring them. Before now, machines had 200% habitability, meaning they could live anywhere at maximum habitation rating. That's not the case. What's changing lifespan? Previously, immortal mechanics machine leaders had, where they frequently died in random accidents, has been removed. Overall, this means that machines are now living longer than they previously did because they no longer have the chance of dying every single year that they are alive. Machine leaders have a starting age of 5 to 10 years and a base lifespan of 100 years, robots have a base of 80, and are affected by lifespan boosting effects. Eternal Machine, the machine variant of Venerable, will make your leaders immortal rather than increasing lifespan. Yeah, it, basically this is the machine patch, machines are going to be amazing. Their version of bio traits is just better, it seems. Both biological empires going synthetic and machine empires will reset their age upon completing ascension to reflect their new bodies. This means your leaders will be living a lot longer now. Gestalt counselors still remain immortal, however, so you don't need to worry about your counselors dying if you're a Gestalt empire. Habitability has also been changed. Machines and robots no longer have 200% habitability, with a floor of now 50%, meaning that every single planet will have a minimum habitability of 50%, similar to subterranean empires. Machines, assuming they do not take a habitability restricted origin like life seeded, have dry, wet, or cold habitability traits, which grant plus 75% habitability on planets of the appropriate types, and plus 50% on all others. So a minimum of 50%, but also plus 50% to other planet types, not including, I believe, Tomb World. So you'll still struggle now to get your habitability above 50% on Tomb World because of these changes. And I think thematically that kind of does make sense. Radiation, for example, is much more damaging to machines and machine systems in the short term than it is biological. That's why in Chernobyl, they used workers to clear the rooftops. They could not send in machines. Machines that do not take a habitability restricted origin can immediately create templates that use the other habitability traits. This is massive. This means you can immediately switch over your machines to be a different habitability preference on day one. So let's say you've got, uh, you're a continental preference or a wet preference and you have a few dry worlds like uh, desert worlds. You could build one pop 
are of this new species type. You can create a dry preference machine, build one pop in your assembly plant, then use that one pop to colonize all of the desert world. So machines still have very good habitability on every world type because they can change their templates straight away. That does kind of sound a little bit too powerful. I kind of hope they nerf that. This does somewhat sound like we're leaving bio empires in the dust. And if you're enjoying this video, please exalt that like button in the name of the mommy sire. A massive benefit for replayability now means that a number of previously locked origins for machines are available. Life Seeded can now be taken by machines, Ocean Paradise is subaquatic machines, Post Apocalyptic is radioactive rovers, Void Dwellers is Void Forge, so we can finally have Void Dwelling Machine Origins, awesome, and Subterranean is Subterranean Machines. Note that the habitability floor from Molebots, which I assume is their version of Subterranean, will stack with the habitability floor of Machines, granting them a minimum habitability of 100% and thus perfect habitability everywhere. So if you want to still play maximum habitability Machines as previously you could play, Subterranean will be the origin for you if you still want to experience that. Machine empires can now assimilate other machines into their primary species, so you can finally force everyone to use the same operating system and charging standard. I assume that's a bit of a European related joke there. Robots, but not machines, are all treated as different subspecies of the same robot species. That should help you with setting your uh, living standards a little bit. They've added a familiar friend after you explore astral rifts, that does require astral planes, and two new machine civics have been added in. If you own Nemesis, you can get spyware directives, and if you own Megacorp, you can get astro mining drones. Astro mining drones, I've seen that, seems a bit weird. Spyware directives does seem pretty darn cool though. There are also improvements coming in this free patch. More machine improvements, would you believe? Machine and robot uprisings now have a chance to spawn as individualistic machines rather than geshed out consciousness machines. This requires the machine age though, of course. Undergoing synthetic ascension now grants species the robot version of various origin link species traits. That's kind of cool. Robots and machines now have the option to select genders, though indeterminate does of course remain an option. Yeah, they can have synthetic uh, dangly bits, I suppose. Uh, machine intelligences no longer suffer from additional empire size from colonies. That's a great boost, actually. It was silly that they got that penalty. I'm glad they've taken it away. Machine worlds also have been changed. Jobs on machine worlds are doubled if you have the machine world ascension perk. Wow. That is awesome, doubling the jobs. Um, okay, Machine Worlds also have a new coordinator district. That is pretty cool. So basically Machine Worlds are getting a bit closer to being an Ecumenopolis planet, though they still won't go all the way. Doubling two jobs up to four is close to an Ecu, but, but not quite there, though you're not paying the rare resources for the district. So maybe it's still very powerful. Um, it, it's nice to put them on par, though maybe they don't need it. Uh, maybe they don't need the strength boost. Fallen empires have been improved. The fallen materialist empire now uses cybernetic portraits for owners of the machine age. The fallen empire's primary species will now have the cybernetic trait, and that is for the materialist, and the fallen empire's spiritualist empire's primary species will now have the psionic trait, because of course they're a psionic fallen empire. Managers, priests, and telepaths now automatically inherit add modifiers from bureaucrats in addition to multiplicative modifiers. So anything that gives a bonus to a bureaucrat will now also be passed on to managers, priests, and importantly, telepaths. This is a boost to unity production empire-wide. The rackets and kettlings are now related as well. They look related, now they're actually related. The kettlings are no longer needing mind over matter to undertake psionic ascension, and the rackets are now cyborgs with a trading algorithms trait instead of being psionic. That's kind of sad. I really like the, the psionic rackets, but yeah, you know, times change and the rackets must change with them. It would not be a Stellaris patch without a bunch of balance changes. The devs have of course put their thumb on the balance wheel and some things are changing. Self-preservation protocols tradition now has the same effect as cloned organs. I honestly cannot remember what cloned organs does. Yeah, is that something new? Anyone know in chat? Write it down below. I'm, I'm, I'm a little lost there. Maybe I'll Google it later. Fallen Empire buildings are no longer destroyed upon conquest as long as they are fitting, i.e. no temples for non-spiritualists. This is awesome. You are now going to be able to get your hands on, I'm assuming, lots of great Fallen Empire buildings. We already could, but um, 
Maybe they're changing a little bit. Who knows? Who knows? Many civics are updated. They've buffed the diplomatic core, empath, and public relations specialist to match diplomatic protocols. Each are slightly different. Scavengers and Co, all of the scavenger traits, now grant minus 5% ship's alloy upkeep. That's a nice little buff, actually. Pleasure Seekers give plus one entertainer jobs from capital buildings, a little bit like the farmer state. Functional Architecture and Co are going to grant plus 15% planetary build speed. That's a nice bonus to have, though. I think that's a reduction from the current bonus, which I want to say is 20-25%, maybe? Yeah, uh, if that's a reduction, that's a nerf. Toxic Baths and Co will now grant half a percent of pop assembly or growth speed from attendance. For biological empires at least, that sounds like a nerf. At the moment they're granting 1% pop growth speed. If it drops to half a percent, that's a massive nerf. Why? Why do they need that? Mutagenic spars are not overpowered, so I'm a little confused about that choice. Corvée system will reduce worker political power by 15%. Overall, this should make your planet a little bit happier if the workers are miserable. But if you have lots of factions, this does reduce your total possible unity output from those factions because it reduces the total available net political power in your empire. Warrior culture is going to reduce war exhaustion gain by 10%. That's a really good buff for warrior culture. Warrior culture is looking stronger and stronger as the patches go on. Freehaven grants 5% worker pop happiness. That's a good boost to Freehaven. It did need it. Freehaven generally just gives you boost to immigration speed. This boost to worker pop happiness now probably brings it up to kind of uh, high C, low B tier, probably. Shadow Council replaced the ruler output bonus with counselor skill plus one and plus 10% agenda speed and 10% infiltration speed. Wow. That actually makes Shadow Council really quite good. I'd put that solidly in the B tier now, uh, if we were going to look at this in a tier list uh, kind of format. Plus one counselor skill is awesome. That's bonuses across the board. And 10% agenda speed is good as well. I wish that was 20%, but 10% uh, still better than the ruler output bonus you previously had. Trading outposts now get plus one trade collection range from star bases and plus eight trade protection from star bases. I'm hoping they still have the bonus to additional star base cap. If they don't, that has made this civic trash. Private prospectors is reducing empire size from colonies by 33%. I believe it already had a reduction of 25%, so bringing that up to 33 is, is definitely awesome. PMC, private military companies, get plus one starting commander level. Great, so we now have uh, almost an equivalent to distinguished admiralty for megacorp empires. That is cool. Divided attention has replaced empire size from colonies reduction with a minus 25% empire size penalty. Guessed out empires already have minus 25% empire size penalty. That brings it up to a total of minus 50%. This is probably stronger than, uh, than the previous benefit. So before you could use divided attention and stack it with imperial prerogative to get zero empire size from colony. But generally speaking, pop, pop empire size is the bigger contributor to empire size so unless you've gone for sovereign guardianship or the equivalent you're going to be getting at least you know 40 50 percent empire size from pops even with all the bonuses you can stack getting minus 50 percent empire size penalties in total or empire size effect is a really powerful bonus i think this kind of makes divided attention an auto pick in the mid to late game if you're a hive mind now zero waste protocol gives minus 5% ship upkeep and minus 10% building and district upkeep. That ship upkeep is a nice little reduction to have when we combine it with other upkeep bonuses we can get. That kind of makes zero waste protocols a little bit more useful than the trash it previously was. OTA updates increases the auto resettle for unemployed drones by 50%. That's pretty nice, though still it's not super strong. Static Research Analysis, which already gives you plus one research options. It's a very strong early trait for Machine Empires. Now has another bonus. Cognitive Nodes will start with a random research specialization. So they've made an already powerful trait even more powerful. I'm a little surprised by that. Uh, maintenance Protocols will also give you plus 5% menial drone output. I assume this is on top of the current benefits. Maintenance Protocols already gives you one unity from every maintenance drone, which then does scale, of course, with other unity modifiers. Getting 5% extra menial drone output is nice to have additionally. That probably bumps up how good Maintenance Protocols is another tier as well, I'd say. 
The game has now added Necrophage and Lithoid as blockers for psychological infertility. That's one of the new origins we're getting. I don't exactly know what this means. Maybe there are some tile blockers we can unlock if we take Lithoid. Though I don't know how we can take Necrophage and still be psychologically infertile. Maybe this actually means that we simply cannot take Necrophage or Lithoid and take psychological infertility. Though, of course, you can't have the Necrophage origin and also have the psychological infertility origin, so I really am confused what this means. You can now construct Dyson Spheres in systems with habitable planets. Oh, good God. However, the planets will be rendered uninhabitable. Yeah, that, that checks out. Wow, so we can actually build a Dyson Sphere and kill a pre-FTL, oh, yep, yeah, we're about to get to that. You can now construct Dyson Spheres and systems with pre-FTL civilizations if your pre-FTL policy is set to aggressive. I'm sorry, we need your son's resources to fuel the war effort against the crisis. Um, that kind of thing. Synthetic Ascension now requires synthetic workers, not the synthetic leaders technology. That massively reduces the technological requirements for Synthetic Ascension, bringing it closer to being achievable uh, a little bit faster, I would say at least, than, than it previously was. Synthetic Ascension Tradition Open now grants 10% progress in synthetic leaders technology, allowing you to get that tech just a bit quicker as well, rather than forced to have it before you can open up the tradition. The Synthetic Evolution Agenda also only grants robotic technologies instead of robotic technologies and AI technologies. If Synthetic is still locked behind an AI technology though, that's kind of a bummer. Unless actually what it now means is that you can take it once you have droids and it will automatically unlock synths rather than forcing you to get two techs first. Okay, so to get Synthetic Ascension now, we only really need to get droids. Then we can take the Synthetic Evolution Agenda to unlock the synth technology and then research it. So we should be able to do that probably in the first, you know, 30 to 40 years of the game then if we're really pushing hard on the tech. Several Synthetic Ascension traditions have been reworked for both organic and machine empires. They're not seeming to list what those reworks do though, but we'll have to find out when we get our hands on the new DLC and the new patch. Grid Amalgamated Pops now inherit Tech Drone modifiers, so you can boost the energy output of Grid Amalgamation by even more. That is really cool, though a little bit grim. The open market's agenda no longer provides useless benefits to criminal syndicates. Excellent, they buff criminal syndicates. Yay. Resource consolidation origin no longer forces machine world preference. Okay, so that now means you can get a regular preference and still live on a machine world as a machine with maximum habitability. That, that sound, it sounds cool. The developers have also rearranged the bonuses from the genetic ascension path, right? So basically it sounds like everything except psionic is getting a bit of a rework, a bit of a reshuffle. Determined exterminators will no longer start on a tomb world as they wouldn't have the habitability for that world. That does make quite a bit of sense. The fleeting excellent trait now costs one point due to the decrease in leader lifespan it provides. They've rebalanced the synthetic and cybernetic tradition trees as well. Cyborgs are only grown now, not assembled. So before you had bio, uh, bio pop assembly, I suppose, They've completely gotten rid of that from the cybernetic tradition tree and now you only get pop growth. I assume you can still assemble robots though. This overall is probably a bit of a nerf to cyborg races. They're kind of reducing pop growth here by doing this for cyborgs. They've allowed amenity traits for robots and they buffed the mining drone home system. Hive minds and machine intelligences now have access to all capital world designations. That's nice. That is a good boost for both of those empire types. The industrial districts will now automatically split jobs if your empire uses consumer goods, if a factory or forge world designation is not selected. This means hive mind empires that pay a consumer goods subsidy to subjects now have a method of actually producing consumer goods. Thank goodness. They've reduced or removed most sources of species modification cost reduction outside of the ascension paths kind of making ascensions really necessary if you want to modify your species in a meaningful way. Robot workers now give minus 0.01 amenities usages and they've doubled trade value from lifestyle. I'm not quite sure what that first one means. Maybe that's a stacking modifier to the whole planet. So rather than robot workers having 50% amenities usage, they provide minus 0.01 amenities usage for the entire planet. So minus 1% per robot worker. That that could be very powerful. That could even be more powerful than the current benefit at high levels of robot workers. 
sentient robots or machines can no longer join the materialist faction regardless of ethics. They can't join the materialist faction regardless of ethics. Huh. Oh, I guess what this means is if you don't have materialist factions, they won't join them. That kind of sounds reasonable, I suppose, if that's what it's doing. Synths should now have the same cost for colony ships as individualist machines. Okay, so that probably means they're reducing the cost of colony ships for uh, synthetics, kind of. Uh, we'll have to find out exactly what the colony ship cost is for individualist machines here, though, to really know exactly what that means. The formless will now count as a mid-game crisis. That is the crisis that can show up in the center of the galaxy once you've found lots and lots of astral uh, portals and you've gone through lots of astral rifts and they, they turn up and sometimes it's kind of like a mini unbidden faction in the mid-game. Why is that important? Well, the mid-game crisis now scales with the square root of the crisis strength slider. So, if you have a 25 times crisis, the mid-game crisis will be five times more powerful, actually making it a pretty terrifying threat in the mid-game if you're having mid-game set to like year 30. Scary. The Great Khan and Great Tempest also now have greater difficulty scaling. There are also a host of bug fixes coming in. I'm not going to read through all of them. What I will do though is note this first one. Now, if you want to check all of the bug fixes out, of course, uh, head over to the Dev Diary. There's a link down in the description. You can read through a long list, longer in fact, than I'm showing on screen now. But the biggest, I would say, bug fix coming in is the devs have fixed the medium preferred attack range being calculated incorrectly. What am I talking about here? Well, when your ships are working out their median range for attack preferences, they have not been calculating median correctly. They have been just simply looking at the middle component you placed on your ships rather than reordering the attack ranges uh, based on how you would calculate median correctly, putting, you know, 30, 30, 60, 60, 60, 60, and 90, 90, giving you a median of 60. What your ships had previously been doing, let's say you'd placed some artillery components down first at the 90 range, then you placed a couple of point defense at 30, and then the three weapons at 60, the mid-range weapons, you would have a median of 30 because the middle component placed was a 30 range component. Yes, that's about as balmy as it sounds. That bug though, thank goodness, is being fixed, so I do not need to make a video on it and I do not need to cover it, and that means Strat's video on that is now out of date. Thank the lords. There have been a host of AI changes that we're getting in as well for improved AI behavior. They have refactored the government weights, refactored the costs and budgets for colony ships, and the AI will now budget for colonization using scripted variables. Should mean that they're better at colonizing and, and building up their early colonies, I am hoping. They fixed the AI assigning the least suitable leaders to the council, they now put actually good leaders on the council. They have improved AI weights for factory and forge worlds when the AI is running a deficit which means the AI should no longer bankrupt themselves by turning their capital into a factory world or a forge world and running out of the opposite of whichever they're not making. They've improved the automatic selection of colony types. That should help everybody, not just the AI. They've lowered the AI resettlement threshold to 0.45 and the AI should no longer declare hegemon wars on empires that have a higher relative power to them, thus risking losing control of their hegemony. There are a whole host of modding changes coming as well. If you want to check those out, go and check out the dev diary, similar to the bug fix situation. Now, what else is coming too? We are getting authority swaps without a DLC lock on them. So back in Dev Diary 336 and 337, the devs detail some of the advanced authorities available to cybernetic and synthetic ascension paths in the machine age. You won't need the machine age to unlock these. You will need Utopia in order to be able to go cybernetic or synthetic, but as long as you have Utopia, you will be able to play with these new authorities. We also have a look at one of the new authorities here in the dev diary. So let's take a quick look at Imperial Feedback. This is an advanced Imperial authority. This, of course, has exactly the same succession rights. Upon ruler death, the Imperial heir becomes a new ruler, and the Imperial heir will have a randomly selected class. But the Empire effects here are very, very different. To remind you, Imperial gives 10% resources from jobs in the capital system, and you get minus one leader size pool. This does not have that. 
Instead, leaders will grant you research points upon their death. You will get physics from scientists, society research from officials, and engineering research from commanders. You'll also gain research points that scale with the leader skill level of the leader that dies. So being able to recruit very high level leaders depending on how many research points we get here, means that if we could then kill those leaders by, you know, putting them on a ship and running them into, oh, let's say um, a, a dragon or something to let them die, then we can convert unity points directly into research points. We'll also get 10% worker pop resource output empire wide and somewhat unfortunately, minus 10% mechanical pop assembly speed. Now, I believe this Imperial Feedback Authority is obtained via Synthetic Ascension, so you do need to Synthetically Ascend to do this, and with Synthetic Ascension, your main species will now be only assembled, so reducing that pop assembly does kind of suck, but the worker pop resource output could be useful, though I'm not entirely sure this one is going to be worth it. It really depends how much research we get on the deaths of all of our leaders. Very cool though to see these new uh, these new authorities being shown off. We can accelerate our research efforts by dissecting the stored imprints of our departed leaders in the Imperial Memory Archives. That way they still contribute to the Empire as they surely would have wanted. Oh good lord. The Imperial Throne is inherited by the designated heir upon the ruler's death. Yep, that all sounds kind of normal. You know, the more I hear about Synthetic Ascension and the Machine Ascensions in the Machine Age, the more spiritualist I am feeling. A lot of this stuff really does sound pretty darn horrific. If you've enjoyed this video on the full patch notes for the Machine Age, but you're wanting a little bit more info on what is coming with this new DLC, you might want to find out all about the two new species packs that Machine Age basically includes. If you want to know more about these species that you'll be getting, click the video on screen now.